this time on Highway Through Hell. Trouble with Timber. I'm done standing around. A pin trailer becomes a puzzle for Mitch. Oh my god! A smoldering wreck. Is that chicken? Oh yeah. Sparks, Cam, and Jamie. I hope we don't get another fire going here. We're gonna be in a world of trouble. And a recovery on a river. Kenny! Sees the return. This is the best place to be. Of a legend. How's the cold looking? Open, but it's bad up there. 11 p.m. on BC's Coquihalla Highway. There's a couple of spot out on the hill. A late winter storm has been punishing drivers. I'm stuck. I can't move. For the last 12 hours. But on the hill. And the green gold on a legendary heavy record has been running non-stop. That's why they call it weather, because they don't know whether he's right or whether he's wrong. Al Quiring's Green Goblin. Quiring's having a field day. He ain't gonna up the hill. That's a busy night on the Coquihalla. Every alligator I kill, 10 more seem to be appearing. The unmistakable 50-ton record. I'm uh, just backing up to you guys here helps keep the mountain highway moving. For more than a decade, <laughs> Al's Kenworth T-800 <laughs> has towed thousands of trucks up the Coke with its 18-speed ultra-low gear transmission and 565 horses under the hood. When the green truck shows up, there's never gonna be a problem. Al hooks on to his 12th semi of the night. As soon as we're going, start grabbing gears. Yeah, shouldn't take them long. I just gotta pull them out of there real quick. But further down the hill. Oh, yeah. Come on, girl. His 13th customer. is already waiting. Damn it! The fully loaded semi. We're in a bad spot here. Is blocking the road. Hopefully the tow truck can get us out of this situation. Yeah, Al's gonna be here in a minute. Give it one good hard pull. Oh, here we go. And hopefully clear the highway. We'll just go up easy. Hook onto this guy. Start going. And you can see. Come on! It's unbelievable stress on my truck. Because it's very hard to lift off on that steep grade. Something's going on back there. Oh, that doesn't sound good. And Kaboom! Oh. Ah. On the highway through hell, closure is not an option. On the coke. Everybody's spun out. Spun out truckers aren't the only ones. Here we go. Having a tough night. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Al's workhorse. Kaboom! Is in trouble. And then. Um, the smell of gear oil. Ah! For the first time in years, Big Green has broken down. A differential right in the middle of the party. We have a problem. Al has lost his front differential. The differential is what gets us uh, moving, and one out of three of them is broken. There's not so much of a chance of pulling the guy out, and it's pretty slim for me to get up the hill myself. 
Al limps the goblin to a brake check. It's frustrating. And the driver he was pulling. Oh, that does not look promising. Awaits his fate. I guess you just take deep breaths and that's about all you can do. A highway supervisor arrives to break the news. He uh, busted the tow truck. Oh, no. But the trucker All right. isn't stranded for long. Yes. Commandeering another machine. Hallelujah. Al finds a way to get the job done. Go and steal the highway's grader, throw a tow strap in it, and head her up the hill. It's an unusual scenario, but the grader operator will give it a go. Sometimes the grader's been stuck, and I've come along and give him a little tug. The grader starts to pull. <laughs> Here we go! And Al rides along. Oh, here we go. To keep the driver. Just go easy, easy. On track. Just go, yep, on the yep. We're all there working together to keep that road open. It doesn't seem to take as long when I'm sitting in my own cab. Yeah. Hanging on. You here. wanna drive? <laughs> Sometimes it takes hocus pocus. That's what we do. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for helping tonight. I appreciate it. Al gets the semi to the top. But the Green Goblin needs resuscitation. The storm is over. How's the corporal tip? And Al heads for home coast all the way down the hill. Hopefully I can make it back to the shop on my own. Yeah, you're a good driver. 30 miles down the mountain. No snow, nothing. The first spring thaw has brought milder weather to hope. Take scale is wide open. But on the edge of town, Slow right down when you come up to the cut there. There's trouble. Looks like the reefer caught fire to me. Yeah, fire looks like it started in the bottom of the trailer. The driver escaped, but captured the first moments of the fire on his phone. I just tired like smoke coming out of my tires, then the flames coming out, then we call 911. Oh, here. Looks like the brakes got too hot coming down the hill and eventually caught on fire. The smoldering wreck is a danger to motorists on the coke. Dispatch to the call. He's in a bad spot. Jamie Davis is on his way. Oh, I don't know what's in it or what's going on with it. It's loaded, they told us. He arrives on scene in minutes to haul away the smoky hazard. Biggest issue coming up on this job, we've got to get off the highway quick. Holy man, slow down. Traffic is coming around the corner fast. Jamie's called in a second wrecker to help with the recovery. Operator Cam Nino shows up in the 45-ton General. Watch your back. They're coming around here at a million miles. We have to try and get this done quickly as possible. Bit of a dirty one. Yeah. Tires and wheels are all blown out. The trailer. Is that chicken? Is packed with frozen meat. Probably about 40,000 pounds of chicken in there. To get the rig ready to tow. <laughs> I hate touching meat. It's gonna be gross. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's not gonna be nice. Cam has no choice. He needs to crawl under the stinking semi. Yeah, right. The fire damaged all the airlines. So we're gonna have to cage these brakes. Drop the drive shaft out of it. Chipped in. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Uh. The trailer. 
is free to roll. We're out of here. Okay. But the charred wreck can't be towed far. The fires melted the tires off to one side, so they're not gonna turn too well. There's a pullout down the hill a little ways on the right-hand side. We really need to move that off the highway and get to a pullout. Real nice and slow. Hopefully we don't catch fire. Let's go. Dragging it is the fastest way to get the road open. And I'll see you down the hill. Out, Roger. As Jamie follows Cam. Metal touches pavement. You worry about another fire happening. Yeah, we're smoking on this side. We know it's risky business, but it's a calculated risk. One hundred feet shy of the pullout. The landing gear is sparking a bit back there. Could be disastrous, so hope we don't get another fire going here. Sparks oh. turn into flames. We're gonna be in a world of trouble. Dragging some tires there. On the coke. The fire is at the front of the trailer. A burned out wreck being dragged off the highway. That is something else. Threatens to reignite. No, I hope it doesn't light up again. We could be in a world of trouble. Sparks or not. We have to get this trailer off the road. Cam tows the smoldering load to a safe pullout. The landing gear's rubbing on the ground. Where Jamie follows behind. There's no better choice here. Real nice and slow. After a few tense minutes, Cam and Jamie have the trailer off the highway. The smoke's slowing down, so yeah, I'm relieved. It's thawing cargo. All the melting chickens putting it out as we go. Has helped snuff out the fire. Nothing surprises me anymore. But to take away the chicken wreck. Next phase of this operation here is to tow the two units separately. Cam and Jamie must disconnect the tractor from the trailer before separating. The fifth wheel's not releasing. Is that pin won't come out? They discover a problem. Pin is not releasing. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough one. We've tried to release the fifth wheel and it's not coming apart. What a mess. It's obviously damaged in the fire and the heat. It cannot be hauled the way it is. So Jamie, decides to fight fire with fire. We're gonna have to cut the plate off. Okay. But that's the quickest way for us to get out of here. Jamie's mechanic, Renato Ramirez, slices through the pin and plate. If something's not working, then you move on to the next thing. The tractor and the trailer. Bingo, bingo are severed. Hey! <laughs> we got it separated, and we're done for the day. OK, right there is good. Pull that! Nice! Ready to head back to Hope, Cam takes the tractor. Oh, look how good I am. While Jamie uses the python to haul away the trailer. Yeah, there we go. Bringing in the python to do this job it's shorter, more maneuverable. It's a handy truck in tight places. It's a great feeling to finish up a wreck. Okay, yeah, we're out of here. This is the high point of towing, getting it done and getting it off the road. Pretty damn good job everybody did. I'm pretty happy. I'm really happy. Oh, yeah, she's opened up there. Thank you so much.
The next day, 75 miles north. How's your looking, Merritt? Can't lose anyone. Spring light conditions in Merritt. Now you got an accident scene up here. Have not made for a trouble free morning. Truck lost and went across the median. Reliable towing has just dispatched a 50 ton record. We're heading down into Merritt here. We've got a logging truck that's flipped over onto its side. Operator Mitch Carr heads to an overpass. He's taking up one full lane. Just south of town. Oh, well, I'm going to knock on wood because I hate lumber trucks. And there we have it. When Mitch arrives, yeah, that's a bit of a mess. He pulls up alongside all 72 feet of the logging track. Well, that one doesn't look too good. The wreck's bulky load is on the road and over the bank. He slid into a guardrail. Holy, what a mess. It was gonna make things a little bit more difficult to just roll this back over again. We have an absolute mess here. The logging truck was entering the overpass when its load shifted. <laughs> landing beside a concrete barrier. The driver escaped serious injury. And incredibly, the logs didn't land on any other vehicles. In this case here, what's happened is a guardrail didn't allow a lot of those logs to go anywhere. 30,000 pounds of timber trapped between the truck and the barrier has pinned down the wreck. For the majority, all these logs are still kind of sitting in the bunk. That's going to be the messy part. Reliable operators James Luke and Rooster wow. are also on scene. Flipping this thing back over with the remainder of those logs, is gonna, it's going to throw that trailer all over the place, right? We're going to have to try and do a control roll somehow. Trying to roll a logging truck over with the lumber on it still is definitely a big problem. Here, there, and everywhere from the looks of it. There's a chance it'll bend or break the bunk arms. You're putting so much load onto those side rails, they're not meant to hold that kind of weight. But Mitch has a bold plan. I want all this lumber off of the tractor and trailer, and I spring the tractor and trailer over with nothing on it. To separate the rig from the logs. We're going to have to scooch the up. whole thing over on its side. Yep and let some of the load come off the rail and then bring it over afterwards. For this recovery, James will operate one of Reliable's 50-ton wreckers because his main ride is in for repairs. Currently, I am driving the Red Baron till the black sheep is done. Oh, my God. James rigs to the front of the wreck. I'll grab one of the rear axles on the bottom side while Mitch runs lines to the back. Using both wreckers, they'll attempt to slide the logging truck out from underneath the load before setting up for the final flip. I'm ready if everybody else is ready. Beautiful, let's do it then. Mitch and James start to winch. Our plan has to be perfect. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. But the massive logs. He's not pulling that out of there. Are still holding down the wreck. I didn't lose as much of that load as I wanted to. I know. We're hoping that we'd be able to slide the trailers out from underneath the logs. The logs are coming with it. The logs are already bound up against the barricade, so they're just stopping right there. They're not rolling off. If these bunk arms bend or break, we're going to have logs everywhere 
And I gotta pull the back trailer off right now and get it uprighted? So Mitch changes tactics, and they attack the wreck. Aha! Uh -huh. Piece. Yeah, thanks. By piece. I grab that hook and run it to the back of the trailer anywhere. Mitch starts with a rear trailer. We'll try and drag it out of the way because it's the easiest one that's accessible. You want another small chain? Okay, make sure you're out of the way. The back end sits empty, except for one log but weighing nearly a ton. I don't know how well this is gonna work. Even a single log. Get out of the way. Will be hard to shake. So that log's gonna cause you a pain in the ass. If that log doesn't come out, we're gonna start breaking things left, right, and center. single stubborn log Get out of the way. is holding back Mitch on the first stage of a rough and tumble recovery. Logs are big, logs are long, logs are heavy. But with some help from gravity, oh my God. the back end of the wreck is finally on its wheels. Well, that's one way to do it. This cat's ass. To pull the 2,000 pound log off the trailer, one ton operator, Rooster, moves into position. It's making our job a little bit tougher, but we're gonna get it done. Now, Rooster, pull. With a little tug, the log is towed away. But the rest of the wreck remains trapped under the bulky load. Try and go as high with him as possible. Mitch and the crew try to lift the lighter ones. These are heavier than they look. But 15 tons of timber are Why still in the way. This is the biggest and heaviest game of pickup sticks you're ever gonna play in your life. Sweet. To lighten the load, a welcomed sight rolls up to the scene. We got a hold of the local lumber company. They sent a loader out to help us. Go team! Okay, one down. Mitchell, what's the plan, Stan? We'll try and sling this and drag this off of the trailer box. The reliable crew use extra chains and a strap. You got one of them shackamole things? To make bundles. Okay, pull. Pull. The loader can come in, grab that pile of logs, and then they're out of our way and out of our hair. Start pulling. The heavy rescue rigging holds its own. That couldn't have gone any better. That's what I'm talking about. That could have took a turn, but it's out. That's all that matters. But at the front of the wreck... So I think that's gonna suck now is that front bunk. There's still a hefty problem. I say we just roll it, and then whatever's gonna stay on that bunk is gonna stay on that bunk. Quickest way to do this, hook and pull, get it flipped over, and get it out of the way. But rolling the wreck, pinned down by logs, is a risky move. All the way to those logs are sitting on those bunk rails. Grab your glove. I'm done standing around. It might not do what you want it to do. Pull your truck up. 75 miles to the south, near Hope. I'm just wondering how hard he had that to be uh, spun around like that. 
A crash over a barrier. Well, he was a little lucky. And into the trees. Yeah, there's a record coming right now. Has Jamie's classic wrecker, the Python. Back to work, baby. On the move. We're heading out to this wreck. It's a rollover. I love this truck. One ton operator, Wayne Sahada, is along for the call. You never know how hard the job's gonna be until you get there. Two minutes up the road. Driver okay, or what? First responders are already on scene. We have a single vehicle off-road, traveling at a high rate of speed. The driver is in stable condition and will be taken to hospital. Police have called in Jamie to get the accident cleared fast. What kind of car is this? A uh, Land Rover. Oh, really? I've got the Highway Patrol there. They're all about getting off the highway as quickly as possible. Wow. Somebody's lucky. This vehicle's busted up pretty bad. There wasn't much left of this thing. We'll just put two chains on, and he'll only back up. We'll just lift it and hang it. We'll just get out of here in two seconds. Normally, Jamie would flip the wreck where it rests, then winch it out. We're just shortening up the chain right now so that when we go to lift it, we don't have so much chain slack. But today, he'll try to lift it up and haul it off the highway in midair. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is a quick clearance technique. Good. I want to just pick this thing up and get it off the road for us to tow away. <sighs> OK. Directly above. Is we got to be real careful here. Power lines could cause serious trouble if the Python's boom lifts too high. Are they uh, short enough that you're going to be able to clear? Yeah, I shortened them up. OK. Stand back. OK, going up. Rig tight to the frame. Jamie has the SUV on a short leash. I want these chains to be as short as possible so that we have enough clearance to get between the concrete barrier and the power line. Jamie's fast track recovery has only taken a few minutes. I'll drive ahead. Okay. Now, it's up to Wayne to move the python forward with the wreck hanging off the boom. Go real gentle. You want to just nice and easily move this thing so it's not swinging out of control. Gentle. Hey, slowly. What happened there? Near Hope. Shut down, westbound. A closed road. Go real gentle has Jamie's crew in a race. Okay. There would be nothing more dangerous to lift this unit up and be driving across the highway and it fall down. Slowly, hey! Dangling four feet off the pavement, Wayne hauls the SUV to the other side. Dealing with it in a pullout is really the safest and best way to handle this wreck. Jamie's quick clearance. Thanks gets the highway open fast. It's starting to move here now. Pressure's off, and the travelers can get where they need to go. But the job isn't over. The wreck still needs to be brought back to the ground on its wheels. He's going to do a reverse roll on this thing. To roll it back over on its wheels, we're going to do a mid-air inversion. Jamie's brought in one of his flat decks and new operator, Mitch Mahood, to help pull off the reverse rollover. It's one of the reasons I was happy to come to work for Jamie. It's the learning factor. Mitch and the deck truck team up with a python. Back truck here, yep. and get to you to pull this thing to roll it out. For the airborne flip. I'll work with you at the same time. Keep pulling. Let her come. 
You're, you're going down too fast. Working together, Jamie's crew. Gotta suck your boom in a bit. Turn the wreck. Hold it, hold it. Okay, just let your side down. Back one, back one. And land the reverse roll. There we go. Perfect. Boy, this guy's lucky, eh? As the job wraps up. And another accident. One on his roof in the ditch here. We gotta leave you, Mitch. Jamie's already off to another. We gotta roll over. Mitch can haul it away. So we're gonna get onto this next wreck. In merit. I'm done standing around. Mitch and James. Let's do this. Pull your truck up. Get ready to roll the dice. This wreck's a little different. A lot of the lumber is still on the trailer. Roxanne, we'll keep it closed down in the meantime. That's both direction. We've got 20 minute windows. Let's go. Of full lane closures. Come on, let's go. Those 20 minutes disappear very quickly when you're dealing with something like this. Earlier today, the logging truck tipped its load on the overpass, pinning down the wreck. Go, go. After clearing away most of the logs, five tons of timber still way down the front trailer and cab. You want top line here? But the reliable crew yeah. need to get it off the road. Whenever you're ready, Mitch. Definitely not the way we initially wanted to do this. But the quickest way to do this is just one quick line, hook and pull. Get it, move! Mitch tightens up the winch line on the 50-ton record. Then makes his move. Keep coming. Keep going. More. Everybody watch yourselves. Over. Keep coming. Keep going. On an overpass in Merritt, BC. More. Okay, watch out. Traffic is stopped. We're the high calling to the clean up there. While a weighed down logging truck is wrestled onto its wheels. It's fighting us the whole way. We'll just see what happens. James and Mitch's gamble. Yep. Wonder bar. Done like dinner, buddy. Pays off. On hook, let's go. And the logging truck. Get the truck out of the way. Is back on its wheels. The road is open. You're good to go. Uh, they're just staying away. And the reliable crew move the truck one more time. Is it in neutral? Yeah. Shaking free. Let's go, in. The last few logs. Yeah. Hey, just drive forward. Everything is getting ready to be pulled out of here. Just go nice and slow, nice and easy. Good. That worked phenomenal. I love working with Mitch. We're a pretty good, solid team. We're pulling out of here, and we'll be able to make it home for dinner. Definitely rewarding knowing that everything's cleaned up. One hundred twenty-five miles southwest in the Fraser Valley. Uh, we're just going up to the thirty-three kilometer mark here. Mission towing operators Dylan Greenwood. I grew up on this lake. Really? Yeah. And swamper Craig Hookie. That water's cool too, buddy. 
climb into the hills east of Harrison Lake. I grew up in this area. It's a beautiful place to work. For this off-road recovery, they'll need more than a tow truck. I hope he's got paddles for that damn thing. It's in the water. We got to take a boat to get to it. And leading the convoy is another operator. First time we've ever used a canoe. Who hasn't been in the field in months. How's your job doing? Uh, it's been pretty good so far. Mission boss Ken DePerrin is back on a job for the first time since his heart attack. I am starting to feel a little better. I can't drive commercial truck yet, but I can drive uh, automobile right now. When I was in the hospital, I was wondering if I would ever get back to towing. I'm not gonna be pulling cable today or nothing like that. Stick it to the right here. He's done this this whole entire life. Yeah, here we go. I think he's just driving him crazy. So he's coming out. It's good for him. Let's see what we got. Offshore in a pristine river, an abandoned off-road vehicle lay partly submerged. She looks a little rocky down here. We're not really sure what it is. We heard it was like a dune buggy side by side. Boy, this is clear water. This is beautiful. Be nice to get that out of there. Keep the environment clean. You want it out? You just drop it down here. Hey, uh, got your boat, buddy. Yeah, you got the boat. This is really deep in this first portion. That's where we need the boat. But first, Ken's crew clear a path. Just throwing some of it out of the way. To make room for the tow truck. And Ken can't resist. Watch his stump. Lending a hand. Gets in your blood and it stays in your blood. OK, you still got to go this way a bit. And that's why you do it. Coming down. How's he look? Clearance, you guys? Beautiful. But I think we've got him in a perfect spot there. With the one ton positioned, Craig and new hire Andy Cullum can run a winch line out to the wreck. Holy, that was close. <laughs> Holy heart. Craig and Andy push off, and Dylan wades out to the wreck. Oh, there's Dylan. From shallow waters downstream. He looks like the Sasquatch coming out of the bush. <laughs> okay, Dill. Yep. Pull the rope. Canoe is not my favorite choice. Canoes are tippy. They're there. They made it. It looks like a custom V dub or something. Oh yeah, she's in there though. She's full of sand. As Dylan rigs up, Ken sizes up the obstacles. I'm just looking at some of these rocks here. There's quite a shelf right here. The vehicle could get hung up on those big rocks coming out. Good. The sunken target Kenny! is rigged and ready. And on shore, Ken's at the controls of a wrecker for the first time since he was hospitalized. It's natural for Ken to want to help. Throw me the rope. Don't pull too hard, Kenny, on that chest. No, I'm just going to pull him in. He wants to get back to the things he loves to do. Are you ready to go? Good to pull. It's been six months since I've done this, so it's kind of a good feeling. Dylan keeps an eye on their catch. We got her big hook on her now. Let's see if she comes over. Oh, she's sliding over. It's like getting back into the saddle of a horse, I guess. <laughs> but as the wreck slides closer to shore, Starting to sink here, Kenny. Yeah. It's getting deeper. The chassis starts to sink. The water is deep against the shoreline. Now you're pulling straight into those rocks, Kenny. If that strap breaks in the deeper water, 
tight. We're gonna have a problem. We're coming up against some rocks now, I can feel it. In BC's Fraser Valley on the Silver River. Starting to sink here, Kenny. Yeah. A sunken wreck. Now you're pulling straight into those rocks. Has hung up 30 feet from shore. We're coming up against some rocks now, I can feel it. On Ken's first recovery in months. Oh. The abandoned chassis is the perfect challenge for the mission boss. It feels good to get back in doing what you like doing. Watch it, Craig. But we're gonna have a problem. That's really super tight, you guys. If the line breaks, it would be bad. What we should do is uh, put another line on as quick as we can. One breaks, we got another one. Ken changes course on the plan. Gotta go back out in the boat. Yeah. Craig paddles out a second line, and Dylan... So I can freeze my ass off and stick my hands back in here. ...must reach into the ice-cold mountain water. If it goes down deeper, now you gotta go swimming. Whew, it's cold. You don't want to do that. So I think Dylan's getting cold out there, yes. But he's young, he can take it, right? I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah? yeah. That's why he's in there and not me. With the second line rigged. Start pulling. Ken gets back on the controls. Yeah, it's coming over. It's going. It's going. And the towing legend. Here it comes. Lands his first catch in months. Good, good. I knew he would get it. <laughs> but Ken's future is still uncertain. This is my first time going out since my heart operation. We got her done. But I got a long road ahead of me yet. It's up to the doctor to decide whether my days of heavy towing is done. Good to see him getting out. It's gonna come toward you. It's not normal for him to not wake up in the morning with a purpose. Thanks, Thanks buddy. buddy. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Good job, you guys. It's a win for him and his health. Pleasure working with you again. I love this kind of job. This is the best place to be. Let's get out of here before it gets dark. 50 miles southwest. Just grab a grab wrench. At the choiring yard in Alder Grove. Lucas. Yeah. Al's youngest son, Lucas. Hey, uh, we're getting a call for a wreck up on Highway 3. He's bringing Big Green. How long till this baby's up and running? Back to life. Tie it all back and uh, good to good work. Two nights ago. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Al's tried and true wrecker. Ah! Broke down on the coat. It is very stressful. There's all kinds of competition for tow trucks that are just eager to take Big Green's spot. To get the repair done fast. I've been uh, working in the yard here since I was probably seven years old. Al called in the best mechanic he knows. Lucas, he's in heavy truck repair, and he's my mechanic, he's my lead guy. That's all I needed right there. You know, it's sure we're father and son, but we're also teammates, which, you know, to me is very important. Did you move that upper airline? Yeah, this will be the last one to tighten up, and it'll be good to rock and roll. I learned from my dad. <laughs> I usually learn things the hard ways, my dad likes to say. Big Green's good to go. I enjoy working with my dad, and I take big pride in it. OK, so we're good to pull this thing down and get rolling? Oh, you can't go wrong with Team Green. <laughs> Green is back on the road, ready for more action. That thing's gonna come over hard. Next time on Highway to Hell. Wow. A lost load 
Bear, keep an eye out. Puts Jamie's crew. Stand back. Over the edge. No, 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 watch out. It's another stuck excavator. A sinking feeling. I gotta sink out of sight. Places Al on a perilous path. Oh. And. Hearing rumors, you wanna leave? Is it the end of the road? You need to give me a decision one way or the other. For Colin. I need to know. 